In the NFL, teams are always trying to find new ways to acquire talent, and obviously sometimes you're going to have to have a sales job. But when it comes to the Detroit Lions, they have now found that they have yet another bargaining chip to make it just a little bit easier. We're going to talk about it, so stay tuned. What are we? What makes us what we are and what we're going to be? It's grit. It's what we started with last year, guys. It doesn't matter if you have one ass cheek and three toes. I will beat your ass. can definitely compete with, with, with the big dogs. 10, 5, end zone, touchdown Detroit Lions. You guys, you guys are unbelievable, man. I, I'm telling you. We are driven by Detroit. Hello, Detroit Lions friends and family members. Welcome on back to yet another episode of MCM Motor City Mania. I'm your host, David T. Pike. And as always, we're diving on in. My friends, it's obvious that when we talk about the NFL, the NFL is a business. It's an entertainment business. But when it comes to the actual process of building teams, when it comes to maintaining the roster, that very much is a job where you are constantly trying to find ways to make it better. That is a GM's job. They are looking at every possible scenario. They're looking at every possible situation, every possible lead to do whatever they can to make the roster better. Not only in terms from a logistics perspective, but also from a talent perspective. You want to make sure you have the right number of players. You want to make sure you have the right number of depth. But you also want to have good quality starting level talent players. Now, here's the thing. Certain teams have got a better ability of doing this than others. Now, what teams specifically have this ability? First and foremost, I would say teams that have had a long-standing record of success in the NFL typically have a much easier time of being able to bring in said talented players. Teams like the Pittsburgh Steelers are one of them because they have had a very long-standing tradition of success. That's one way I could call, you know, a way for, you know, a, a team to try and bring in talent. Being able to say, being able to say, to give a, a sales job of, hey, we have had a long-standing tradition of success here. By you coming here, we can continue to do that. So that's one way you can do it. Another way you can do it is by trying to sell an idea, by trying to sell a culture. This is specifically what the Lions have done over the last couple of years, especially considering the fact that unlike the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Lions have not had a long-standing tradition of success. So when the Lions were first starting out with Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell, they had to sell their idea, they had to sell their vision, they had to sell their culture to prospective, you know, free agents. To, to their agents as well, because it's like, listen, we don't really have anything that would entice you in the early days to say, oh yeah, coming to Detroit would be a good idea. We have to try and sell our idea. We have to try and sell our vision for this team to you to entice you to come out and play for us. And then... You also have other ways that some, you know, some teams will entice free agents. They'll say, oh, hey, you know what? Maybe I was as a coach, you know, with you during this time. We got along really well. We have a relationship. That's another way that that happens. But I'm going to say this right now. The one thing about the NFL that is very, very different, per se, than other leagues, especially like the NBA, is that you typically do not hear players saying that the reason why they're wanting to go play for a team is because there is a certain player on that team that they want to play with. Usually the NFL is a little less, how should I say it, a little less funny about how their players are in terms of, oh, hey, I've got this buddy over here. He's wanting me to come play with him. I'm going to request a trade or whatever, and then, okay, let's make it work. The NBA does that nonsense all the damn time. They will constantly have people saying, oh yeah, I want to go play with this guy because I've got his phone number. We've been friends for years. Let's make a deal so that way I can go play with him. And then you have what are known as those superstar teams, which I'm not getting into basketball. I'm just giving that as a simple, you know, comparison point. The NFL, on the other hand, is much different in that dynamic. But that does not mean the dynamic I'm talking about does not exist. And it is a bargaining chip that we do not typically see in the NFL. But the Lions just found out that they themselves have this bargaining chip. 
Now, what exactly am I referring to? What I'm referring to is a recent comment that was made by wide receiver Tim Patrick. And pardon me, my freaking tag was sticking up, was driving me crazy. Tim Patrick got on 97.1 the ticket the other day, and he was specifically talking about what actually drew him, what actually made the decision for him to come out to Detroit and sign with the team after he was cut by the Denver Broncos. Now, Tim Patrick specifically said this. He said that the reason he signed with the Lions is because after watching Jared Goff's film, he wanted to come and play with Jared Goff. He wanted to come and play with the Detroit Lions. That right there is something you do not typically hear out of players. Players will typically not say, oh, I came to play with a certain player. And I'm talking about in the NFL perspective. Typically, it's about a whole bunch of different other factors, such as location, such as taxes, such as, you know, oh, hey, um, is, there a, is there a good coach here? Is there a good culture here? There's a lot of other different factors that, you know, for NFL players, they take into consideration most times rather than just, oh, well, is this player here? Again, that's more NBA style. So what exactly did Tim Patrick say on this when talking about Jared Goff? Here's the exact quote from the 97.1 The Ticket interview. Tim Patrick said, you could just see he, and again, he's referring to Goff, either threw his guys open or threw his guys into safety. And that's what you want out of your quarterback. That's the primary quote. Obviously, for those that know what I'm talking about, he also had a little quote at the very end of it. He's like, yeah, we know Jared Goff can't run, so he has to throw it. And I think that was kind of more like a playful little jab at Goff because it's like, yes, everybody knows Goff is not the most fleet of foot. So yeah, he's going to throw the ball more often than not. But let's be fair here. Jared Goff has shown his ability to make plays with his feet this year. He's actually done it quite a couple of times, but that's irrelevant. The point is, is that Tim Patrick points out a very, very key thing here. He's talking about how Jared Goff, he throws his guys open. He throws them to safety. I'm going to tell you this right now. I used to play tight end when I was in high school. (laughs) I'm not going to say anything bad, but when you as a wide receiver of any type, when you're going over the middle or when you're going out to catch a pass, you are hoping and praying that your quarterback is able to read a defense and throw a pass accurately to where it's not going to expose you to injury. Now, having said that, that's not going to happen every single time. There is no such thing as a perfect quarterback all the damn time. Jared Goff proved that he can do it for a game, but nobody has ever been perfect 100% of the time in the game of football. Hell, no one's been perfect in life for 100% of the time, save a certain somebody if you believe upon him. But my point of the matter is this. What Tim Patrick is highlighting there is that because of how Jared Goff plays the position of quarterback, how he specifically makes sure to put his guys not only in the best position to catch said football, but to keep them safe from injury, That was why he wanted to come to Detroit. That was why he signed with us. Or I should say maybe better better accurately to say that would be probably that it was one of the decisions, one of the reasons he signed with us. So, why is that important? The reason it's important is because, like I said, it gives the Lions another bargaining chip. Now, bargaining chip in this sense, I'm talking about, hey, The Lions have something that other people want. Not necessarily like a tick for tat, we're going to trade this for that. No, it's like, hey, this is another thing we can use to sell to people to say, hey, this is why you should play for us. Now, why that's important is because, well, let's understand something here. You obviously have teams that are considered, you know, bad. You have teams that are considered rebuilding. And you also have other teams. Well, typically when you're talking about good teams in the NFL, they have what is known as a quarterback that can win them games. And that's good. That's a good thing to have. It's good to have a quarterback that you can rely on to win games. But great teams are teams that not only have a quarterback who can win, but also can be some sort of an enticement for players to want and come and join the team that they're playing on. Now, I'm not saying that happens all the damn time, but... Let's just, you know, understand something here. When you think about some of the best teams that have ever played in the NFL, they usually have had a very damn good quarterback on top of said organization. Because if you're going to have a team that's really great, 
the one position you definitely have got to have squared away is the quarterback position. Well, I decided to start thinking about this and looking at it from this perspective. When you start thinking about quarterbacks, you also, again, much like with teams, you have different categories. You have journeymen, you have busts, you have over, under, uh, underrated, you have good, bad, great, whatever term you'd like to use, these are terms that are used to grade quarterbacks or to say, hey, this is what this guy is in terms of talent or his ability to play. Well, here's what I'm going to tell you. Those are all great things to say, but when you have a quarterback that is playing so well or is playing as great as they are that it's able to attract other players, now you are in a very rare category. You are talking about very few quarterbacks that have been able to do that. And when I'm talking about, you know, the ability of a quarterback to attract somebody, I'm not talking about somebody that played together in college because it's like, okay, you already had that connection in college. I'm talking about somebody in the NFL who has never played with said person, but because of what they've seen, what they've watched on film, what they've heard, all that nonsense, they're like, hey man, I want to go and play with him. Now, when you put it in that perspective, let's just keep it within the last, you know, 25 years. Since this is 2024, let's go to 2000 pretty much on up. There are only a handful of quarterbacks that I can think of that would realistically fall into that category. And I mean, you're talking about guys like, hell, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes. These are the types of quarterbacks you think of when you hear or think of players that would love nothing else but to go and play for those guys. I mean, Tom Brady definitely had it several times. When there were players that specifically wanted to play with him or they retired and came out of retirement because they would only play for him. That happened. Peyton Manning had it a couple of times where it's like, hey, this player left one team, decided to come join my team, or as was the case with Emmanuel Sanders, they had a deal in place with another team, backed out of that deal, and then decided to come play with Peyton Manning. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about here. Well, when you think about that, Jared Goff has now kind of joined that conversation because it's like Tim Patrick was going to be, when the, when the Broncos cut Tim Patrick, there were a lot of teams that were very interested in getting his services, even despite the fact that he'd had two straight years of season-ending injuries. But Tim Patrick decided to come to Detroit because he had seen how well Jared Goff had thrown the ball. He had seen how well Goff was on film that he wanted to come play with us because of Jared Goff. Again, that is a very rare bargaining chip to have. It's not something that every team is going to say, oh yes, we have that kind of thing on our squad. Because let's, <laughs> let's call for what it is. There are teams out there right now, it's like you could not sell to a prospective player, oh yes, you should come and play with us because of our quarterback. That's just not going to happen for a lot of teams because their quarterback is either just absolute booty cheeks or they're just not good enough for where it would actually be considered a selling point. And again, I've been putting this in terms of just wide receivers now. But this actually can apply to more than just wide receivers and tight ends or whatever to quarterbacks. You have to think about it. This can apply to a multitude of different areas. And I'm going to explain that in a minute. Because when you think about it, what Goff has done, he has shown that not only he possesses the tools as a quarterback to win because he's a winner, but also he has proven that he has the immense talent that other players are now not only taking notice of, but it's attracting good players to want to come to Detroit. It's another way that the Lions can get players to come sign with them. And this is crucial because, think about it, up until this point, the Lions' main selling points were the fact that, okay, Dan Campbell is a player's coach. Dan Campbell has built a player-oriented culture that players just absolutely gravitate to. Okay, that was one selling point. Another selling point was Brad Holmes' team-building success, which obviously, you know, all of the building through the draft has been become very apparent. So it's like, okay, the Lions have shown that they know what the hell they're doing as far as building a team. And then you have to think about it from this perspective. The one thing they showed this offseason was that they take care of their own. The fact that they have signed so many contracts this offseason to make sure that players that are their own are staying in town, that is a huge, huge selling point for players because it's like, hey, 
if I do my job, I know I'm going to be taken well care of. The Lions have made sure that, hey, we are a team that you should definitely want to play for because we have all of these incentives. We have all of these different things that we can, t- we can sell you to. Well, when you put into perspective how Tim Patrick decided to join based off of the performance of one of our own players in Jared Goff, again, that's a massive bonus because that's not typical of most teams. Typically, it's about, okay, what team has the most money? What team has the best chance of winning a Super Bowl? And not necessarily because they have a quarterback or a player like what we're talking about here with Goff. That's important. Because if you put that into perspective, like I was saying, it's not just wide receivers, tight ends, or offensive players per se, like, you know, skill position players, that this whole concept can apply to. It can apply to virtually damn near almost any player. Now, why do I say that? Let me just give an example here. And I'm going to hate myself partially for making this example, but I'm pretty confident that most people that watch my, you know, content have also played Madden. And if you've played Madden within the last, you know, year or two, you've seen how when Madden came out with the new, you know, uh, free agent dynamic, that when you would go out and you would sign players, they would have certain things that would make it more likely they would sign with you. Now, here's what I'm going to say. Madden is not based in reality. Let's just, (laughs) let's just get that out of the way. Madden is not even close to based in reality. However, though, the game is based off of reality. And I can tell you this right now. EA Sports definitely understands that when it comes to players, they're going to have certain things that are going to draw them more to a team, whether it's location, whether it's taxes, whatever. And that's why they put that in the game because that is very much a real thing that players consider when they're signing with a team. Well, one of the things that's in the game is if the team has a franchise quarterback. Well, let's just call it for what it is. Um, Jared Goff is a franchise quarterback. And if you realistically want to think about it here, for teams that are considered Super Bowl contenders, 99% of the time, especially the great teams, the ones that are considered dynasties, they typically have that franchise quarterback. Because they have to. Otherwise, you're just typically a one-and-done kind of situation. Or maybe you got there, and then that was it. You didn't really do anything. Well, when you consider Jared Goff's extended production and current production with the Detroit Lions, plus all the other factors that have been going into this conversation over the last couple of years, it's more than apparent that Jared Goff has earned that recognition here in Detroit, along with some other well-earned recognitions like, oh, hey, top five quarterback, um, one of the best quarterbacks currently playing. These are all things that Jared Goff has earned. I mean, for crying out loud, take a look at what Goff has done since 2021 in terms of statistical production. Goff is eighth highest in completion percentage. He has the fourth most passing yards. He's tied seventh in terms of completion average per throw. He's ranked seventh in passing touchdowns, and he's ranked fifth in passer rating. Let's just call for what it is, folks. Um, Jared Goff is definitely a top 10 quarterback since 2021. He's almost, at least statistically, a fringe top five quarterback. That's just since 2021. And again, remember, 2021 and about the first half of 2022, uh, the Lions were not winning a whole lot of games. Just keep that in mind. And then, we obviously know how well Jared Goff has been playing this year. I've talked about it quite a bit, but again, when you take a look at the numbers, it definitely brings this whole conversation further into perspective. Jared Goff is ranked second in the NFL in terms of pass completion percentage. He's ninth in passing yards. He's number one in completion average per throw. He's tied seventh for passing touchdowns, and he's ranked second in the NFL for passer rating. Jared Goff is playing at a level that very few quarterbacks are able to play at, not only in current time, but from times past. That is how good he's playing. And again, When you have a quarterback that's not only been doing it this year, but for an extended period of time, that's why, as Tim Patrick said, watching the film, he was able to see that, hey, Jared Goff is not only ridiculously accurate, but he does his absolute best to make sure he's not putting his wide receivers in danger. And again, being a former receiver myself, 
you have no idea how much of a big, you know, selling point, how much of a big, you know, thing that is for receivers because obviously their their livelihood is to go out and make catches. But they don't want to do it by getting constantly knocked in the ribs and freaking having their legs blown out. That's why having a quarterback like Goff is massive. So again, what I'm trying to say by putting this all together is this. The fact that the Lions have had the ability to acquire, you know, top-end free agents over the last, you know, couple of, like the last year and a half, that's definitely been something based upon, okay, how Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell have built this team. But when you now factor in that Jared Goff, by Tim Patrick's own words, was able to get him, was able to entice him to come to Detroit just based upon how well he was playing on film, that's yet another win for the Lions. And again, it's one more thing that the Lions now have to make them more attractive to potential free agents than other teams. And again, when free agents are deciding where they wish to go, that's a huge selling point because the more, the, let's put it this way, the easier you have of a time to try and convince somebody to come and play for you, that's not only good for you as a team in terms of negotiations, but it's also good for you in terms of your bottom dollar. Because typically when you have a team that's bad, they have to pay more for getting good free agents. Us Lions fans know about that because we had to go through that for 20-something years. The only time we ever got good free agents to come play for us is when we had to pay through the damn nose. Now it's coming out that, hey, players are willing to take less money to come and play here because that's how good of a team that we have. That's how many good players that we have. That's the type of culture that we have. So yeah, that is why having, yet again, another bargaining chip like Jared Goff as a player that other players want to play for makes it even easier for the Lions because it's like, Goff's not going anywhere anytime soon, and Goff's going to be playing at the level he's playing for yet quite a couple more years. So it's like, okay, the Lions clearly have all the bargaining chips that they could ever possibly need or want to build this roster even better than where it is right now. And that is a position that Lions fans ought to absolutely enjoy the hell out of. But anyway, folks, having said that, I'm going to end this episode. I believe I've done a pretty good job of explaining it. And I just want to say to everyone, thank you all for watching another episode of MCM Motor City Mania. If you like what you saw, by all means, I highly encourage you all to watch the next episode. Also encourage you all to do one of these three things, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. If by chance you subscribed in the past, but you forgot to do so at the time, I want to highly encourage you all, please, not only to make sure you subscribe, but make sure you hit that bell notification icon so that way you guys never miss any more content that I push out. I also want to encourage you all to share the content with your Lions friends and family members. Share it here on YouTube, share it on Twitter, share it on Facebook. Share anywhere and everywhere you possibly can, because the more we can share it, the greater the channel can grow and spread, and we're able to bring in new content viewership. And with that being said, whether you guys have been a long-time viewer or this is your first time viewing me, I hope you all enjoyed the content. I hope you all got something out of it. I also hope you got something in your life that makes you happy and it makes you smile. God bless, my friends, and until the next time we meet, I'll see you all in the next episode.